Hello everyone. Let us now see how we can do Gaussian modeling on the rotated bounding boxes and how this helps us overcome the problems of skew IOU and the LN regression losses for the rotated bounding box case. But before you guys go into this video, I would request all of you to go through the previous videos in the playlist of rotated object detection and they are just a couple of minutes long and uh, they will help you understand the concepts that I discuss here much more clearly. So let's get started. On the top here, what we see is the equation of a multivariate Gaussian, which is parameterized by its mean mu and covariance matrix sigma. For the two dimensional case, the covariance matrix would look something like this, where the diagonal elements correspond to the variances in the x axis and the y axis respectively, whereas the off diagonal elements represent the covariances. That is, it tells us how x varies as y varies and how y varies as x varies. So it turns out that the covariances, they are always equal, which makes the covariance matrix always symmetric. Another interesting thing is that the covariance matrix is encoding the geometric information about the two-dimensional Gaussian. So this can be seen here. So in the bottom two cases, the off-diagonal elements are zero, that is covariances are zero, and therefore the two-dimensional Gaussians are axis aligned which you can see here. And the variances along the various axes would be given by these diagonal elements. And the images on the top here, uh, they have covariances. So this has a positive covariance, which causes a right tilt to the 2D Gaussian, whereas this has a negative covariance, which causes a left tilt. Now the covariance matrix we said is a symmetric matrix. And if we dive into linear algebra, there are some interesting properties about symmetric matrices. The first one being diagonalizable. That is a symmetric matrix A can be broken down into V, D, V inverse, where V is the eigenvector matrix and D is the corresponding eigenvalue diagonal matrix. Now the eigenvectors for this matrix are orthogonal, which gives us an interesting property that V inverse would now be V transpose and therefore A can be written as VDV transpose, which is nothing but a rotation, scaling, and then a reverse rotation. And the rotation matrix that we're talking about here is this matrix, which is an anti-clockwise rotator. So coming to the first case, that is that of a square bounding box. So let us say that we have a standard 2D Gaussian which has a mean mu at the origin and the covariance matrix as an identity matrix. And let us say that our square bounding box is the one enclosing this standard 2D Gaussian. So the covariance matrix RS can be broken down into RSR transpose, which would be nothing but identity matrices. So if we were to transition from this square bounding box into a rectangular bounding box, we can take each of the points of this standard 2D Gaussian and pass it through a scaling matrix uh, given here, where Sx represents the scaling along the x-axis and Sy represents the scaling of that point along the y-axis. And what is the effect of doing scaling on the variance? So if we do a scaling, uh, what happens is that the new variance would be the scaling factor squared times into the original variance. So therefore, for this rectangular case now, the new covariance matrix would look like this, where the uh, diagonal elements would now be Sx square sigma x square and Sy square sigma y square. Let us take a toy example now, and let us say that this square uh, bounding box uh, represents uh, a standard, uh, what you call 2D Gaussian uh, being enclosed here. And uh, let us say that we are passing each of the points of this standard 2D Gaussian through using uh, this uh, scaling matrix that is Sx is 2 and Sy is 3. So what this represents is that if we have say a point 1, 0 here, it would become 2, 0. And if there is a point 0, 1 here, it becomes 0, 3. So if the width of the square bounding box is say 2, it would now become 4. And if the height is 2, it would now become 6. So if we were to write the scaling factors Sx and Sy in terms of the width and the height of this new rectangular bounding box, it would be Sx would be W by 2, so 4 by 2 is 2, and Sy would be H by 2, 
six by two is three. And if we plug this S X X S Y into the covariance matrix equation, and keeping sigma X and sigma is Y as one because of the standard two D Gaussian, so we get this uh, equation for the covariance matrix. And uh, if we were to break it down into R S R transpose, since there is no rotation, the rotation matrix here would be identity matrices. Now coming to the final case, the case of the rotated or oriented bounding box. So it is the same as a rectangular bounding box, just a rotation angle theta is added to it. So therefore, when we break the covariance matrix of this rotated bounding box into R S R transpose, the only addition is the addition of this rotation matrix. Now we are in a position to define what would any random rotated bounding box in our data set. Would look like using these equations. So the mean of the 2D Gaussian approximating that rotated bounding box would be the center of the bounding box given by its x and y coordinate, and the covariance matrix of that 2D Gaussian would be given by this equation, uh, which is further simplified into this equation now. What advantages this gives us is that firstly, if we were to take a covariance matrix and interchange its width and height, and add an angle difference of 90 degrees. Uh, both of them are equivalent. This can be seen if you plug these things in this equation here. And what this gives us is that firstly we had a case where the open CV definition and long edge definitions were not equivalent. And in that case, what was happening was the width and the height were getting interchanged, and there was an angle difference of 90 degrees. Now with the introduction of this Gaussian modeling, both these cases are now equivalent. Secondly, it eliminates the boundary discontinuity problem in case of the open CV definition. So what was happening in that case was when the anchor was doing an anti-clockwise rotation to match with the ground truth, uh, what was happening was the width and the height were getting interchanged and there was an angle difference of 90 degrees. Now in this case, using the property that we have here, uh, this increased loss should not uh, be affected as both these cases are now equivalent. The second property is that if we keep the width and the height same but introduce an angle difference of 180 degrees, both the covariance matrices are still uh, equivalent and this eliminates the boundary discontinuity problem that we were seeing in case of the long edge definition. where the anchor if it was making an anti-clockwise rotation uh, an angle difference of 180 degrees was causing the loss to become very high. So using these interesting properties and using the Gaussian modeling, various loss metrics have been designed like the Gaussian Wasserstein distance, the KL divergence and KF IOU for rotated object detection and these are the leading benchmarks as of now uh, when we talk about rotated object detection. Thank you everyone.